This is a follow-up video. I mentioned in the previous video that if you couldn't straighten out the framing plates that they might need to be cut. And just wanted to show you what I was talking about here. Just get a Sawzall and cut through the framing plates. Put another stud next to the other one so you can support the framing plates there. Maybe toenail up into the plates also. And then of course put a strap on it. Most engineers require a 48 inch long strap here. Um, they're getting a little carried away, I think, but uh, just kind of throwing out what is the industry standard. You can put whatever strap you want on there. If you are not getting it inspected, I will let you uh, do what you need to do there with that one. Something else I wanted to show you was that sometimes you are going to raise the warped plates and uh, end up with another problem and that would be gaps you know now I have a it's hard to see in this one here but I have a bow in it and so I'm kind of pretending like I raised it up with the 4x4s and the jacks but it actually separated from the other studs just kind of give you an idea this is just a possibility I've seen this happen before you go to you go to raise the plates that are warped and you end up with um, separating it from the rest of the stud. So again, you might wanna cut the framing plates to eliminate this problem. But if you do run into this problem, you can always use a straight edge and then fur out the ceiling joist. And again, I mentioned this in the last video and just wanted to give you an idea of what uh, I was talking about. So again, we have the plates that aren't straightening out here. Um, you raise it up, you know, adjust the bottoms of it. And then when you're done, you could just simply straight edge the ceiling. Um, and this can be done with an eight foot level, something like that. Um, they actually do sell a straight edge tile installers actually use them to float their floors but uh, here's a good example of what I'm talking about the gap between the framing studs is going to push the ceiling joist up and provide you with an uneven surface on the ceiling and if you install the drywall on the ceiling you might actually uh, see some variations in there. So to fix the variations, they sell some cardboard spacer strips and I think they're about a sixteenth of an inch wide and uh, you simply just staple them onto the um, framing members, joist or wall studs and uh, you just kind of like feather them in like this and again you use the straight edge to straighten it out. And you can see here that we only have two. That's because this ceiling joist isn't as high as this one here and of course I didn't put them on here but just wanted to give you an idea what they would look like and you can see here where the gap wasn't as big and only required two pan back out here there it is you might need to put some shims underneath all of the framing studs that are raised and then toenail them um, I don't know if you could use screws for something like that. You'd probably use some building hardware. Um, the shims, you can actually use, they used to sell. I don't know if they still sell them anymore, but we used to buy shims made out of cedar that were used for adjusting doors when they were installing doors. So I don't know if they can still be purchased at most home improvement centers. But uh, you might want to look into that or ask somebody. Say, hey, I need some uh, shims. Do you got any? And, of course, we used to use wood shingles, not shake shingles, but wood shingles. We would take and split those up and use those for shims also. So, anyway, that is it for this video. It is going to have a follow-up video, kind of give you an idea of what you can do with the floor here to straighten it out also.